and welcome to all the devotees online. Thank you very much for your attendance. We continue Srimad Bhagavatam after a couple of weeks due to all the festivities. Canto 1, chapter 12, verses 15 to 21, birth of Emperor Parikshit. 
Om Jnana Timi Vandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Manabhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Thaparakamalam Shri Purun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagarpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vandavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vanchakalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vevacha Patita Nam Pavanyabhyo Vaishnava Vyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garada Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sarva Shastra Piyusha Sarva Vaireka Sadhvala Sarva Siddhanta Raknadya Sarva Lokai Tritvada Sarva Bhagavata Prana Shrimad Bhagavata Prabhu Kali Gando Didaditya Shri Krishna Parivartita O Shrimad Bhagavata O Nectar Chanda Nectar Chanda from the ocean of all Vedic scriptures O most prominent transfer of fruit of all Vedas O you are enriched with the jewels of all spiritual philosophical conclusions O you who grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world O liberate of the Vaishnava devotees O Lord You are the sun which has arisen to dispel the darkness of Kali Yuga You are actually Lord Krishna who has returned amongst us Paramananda Pataya Prema Varsha Sharayate Sarvada Sarva Sevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namaste O Shrimad Bhagavatam I offer this respectful obeisance to you by reading you and attain transcendental bliss for your soul was rain pure love God upon the reader you are always to be served by everyone for your incarnation of Lord Krishna Madhekas Bandhu Mat Sanghim Mat Goro Man Mahadana Man Nishtaraka Mat Bhagya Mat Ananda Namastute O Shrimad Bhagavatam O my only friend O my companion O my teacher O my great wealth O my deliverer O my good fortune O my bliss I offer respectful obeisance unto you. Asadu sadu tadahin atun chotraka anamun chakadachin mam premna ritkate ospura O Shimon Bhagavatam O give us saintly this and saintly O I believe you very fond please do not ever leave me please become manifest in my heart and my throat accompany the pure love of Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadhyasya Yutanvaya Ditaratas Charte Swabhigna Swarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yatsuraya Tejo Vari Mridam Yata Vinimayo Yatratir Sargom Rishaham Damna Svena Sadani Rastakuakam Satyam Param Dimahihi O my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of the Spirit, O pervading personality of the body, I offer my respectful obeisance to you. I married upon Lord Shri Krishna because he's the absolute truth. And the primal cause of all causes of creation, sustenance, and destructions of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahma, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by lucid representation of water seen in fire, land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily, temporarily manifest by the reactions of the three modes of nature, pure factual, real, and real. I therefore made it upon him, Lord Shri Krishna, who is eternally existent, transcendent abode, which is forever free from lucid representation of the material world. I made it upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Pranal Paisha Sabya Kalavas Minyuge Jana Manda Sumanda Matayo Mandabag Yupadrata. All learned one in this energy of Kali Mene, but short lives, they are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all resistant. Narayan, Maskritya, Narachevo, Narotamam, Devim, Saraswati, Vyasam, Kroja, and Adirayat. Before reciting the Shrimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisance unto the personality of God in the Rhine. And to Nara Narayan, which is the supermost human being, and the Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Shila Vyasadev, the author. Savai pum sopar odar mo yato bhaktira dok chaja ahitu ke prati yata ayatma suprasiddhati the supreme occupation dharma of all humanity is that by which man can attain to loving devotional service under the transcendent Lord 
Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jana Yakti Savairagyam Yanam Tayat Ahoytukam By rendering devotional service under the personal work of God at Chi Krishna, one immediately acquires causes, knowledge, and detachment from the world. Vedanti Tattva Tovidas Taktam Yat Knana Madhvayam Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaniti Sabyate Then the transcendentalist know the absolute truth calls non-dual substance Brahman Paramatma Bhagavan. Shru Shru Shosha Dadanasya Vasudeva Kataru Chisyan Mahatsevaya Vipra Punya Tirta Nishevanat O twice born sages, by serving those devotees, are completely free from all vice. Great service is done. By such service, one gains eternity for hearing the message of Vasudev. Shrinatvam Swagata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Riddham Tustaya Badrani Vidurnati Surit Satam Shri Krishna, the person of God, who is Paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart, and the benefactor of a truthful devotee, cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which end themselves virtuous and properly unenchanted. Nastapayasho Badresho Nirtam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatu Tamasloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nishtiki. By regular attendance in the class of the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed in loving service under the person of God, who is praised with transcendent songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We continue Srimad Bhagavatam based on the teachings of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta and the Swami Shila Prabhupada, the Pandacharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Hare Krishna and welcome again. Let us cover any feedback you could remember in the past few weeks or after a couple of few weeks when we had our last lecture uh, session, chapter 12, verses 7 to 15. If there's anything that caught your attention that you could remember uh, in that session, please share with us in the chat. Amavati Radhika says, power of spiritual defense, automatic protection from Shri Krishna. Ex example of Jad Bharat, Shrimad Bhagavatam 199, beautiful verse. Lotus feet of Shri Krishna protects and shelter showers of delicious nectar. Yes, Krishna protects as well as showers nectar. Krishna consciousness the perfection of Krishna consciousness means complete shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that shelter provides full protection and full experience of nectar. In the condition stage, in the neophyte stage, we are striving on the path to completely surrender ourselves to the lotus feet of Krishna. And there is glimpses of nectar, and there may be even glimpses of protection. The goal and objective is to continue striving for taking full shelter of the Supreme Personality of God. And uh, that is the path of the process of Krishna consciousness. We hear how Krishna is, has protected Maj Parikshit. And it is not that he's protecting Maj Parikshit just because he decided, okay, I'll protect Maj Parikshit just because dot, dot, dot. No, Maj Parikshit is a fully surrendered soul. He is a great devotee of the Lord. And therefore, he has that intimate relationship with Krishna. And thus, he has the full protection of Krishna. And Krishna showed his protection and revealed his protection. For the materialists, we find Krishna does not protect. He does not intervene because they are not interested in him. But for the pure devotees, uh, Krishna is always there. All right, let us continue. So we're going to be covering verses. Uh, I'm going to recap 15 again, but 16 to 29. Uh, the Brahmanas predict Parikshit's future qualities. Okay, I see we got a few more responses. Nalini Kanta says, Krishna consciousness is far higher than astrology. Jainty is only for Krishna, no one else. Yes, wonderful. 
Shamananda Prabhu says, Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for engaging us again today. How do we reconcile and understand the Kripachara situ type of situation that one may encounter? It's almost impossible to follow that route we're hearing uh, being played out, uh, played out here, your thoughts. Yes, we cannot imitate. Majudishtir, the Pandavas, uh, they are exalted souls pure devotees of the Lord. And because of being pure devotees, their perspective to life and how they see life and how they see things in their life is totally different from how conditioned souls will see. We find Kripacharya was directly involved in the war, uh, killed many of the family members that were there was instrumental in killing Abhimanyu. So naturally, from a conditioned perspective, one would want to retaliate. But we find that because the Pandavas are great devotees of the Lord, understanding situations, understanding circumstances, understanding Krishna's hand, they still honored Kripacharya and Yudhishthira Maharaj even handed Parikshit over to Kripacharya for caretaking and never uh, took his involvement in the battle of Kuru Shetra personally or even begrudgingly. So that cannot be imitated. It's impossible to imitate. And as you know, and we may not even be able to understand it right now. It's like, really, how, how is it possible? No way, I cannot do that. So that's fine. We may not be able to do that, but we accept it, it's there in the Bhagavata, which means that's due to the exalted nature of the Pandavas. And, you know, even if you look at the situation of Dhritarashtra, Dhritarashtra did so many things, sanctioned so many things to cause harm to the Pandavas. Yet the Pandavas always respected and honored him like their father and gave him that honor. Even after the battlefield of Kurukshetra, uh, when Dhritarashtra asked, where's Bhima? And Krishna, understanding the situations, pushed uh, the statue. And Dhritarashtra embraced the statue and practically shattered that statue. So he, if Bhima had to go, he would have killed Bhima. But Krishna protected Bhima. After that, Bhima responds to Dhritarashtra and says, I'm still alive, but I'm happy to come into embrace. And if you still feel you want to kill me, go ahead. See, he didn't keep that, that grudge. Um, so that's exalted qualities. We cannot imitate it. So because we cannot imitate what we would do, is we would take this situation that we cannot reconcile, appreciate, and wrap around our, our mind around it. We would put it on a back burner and let it there. Just leave it there on the back burner. It's there in the Bhagavatam. We appreciate it. It's there. I cannot really understand it. Leave it on the back burner. And as we proceed with our Krishna consciousness and mature in our Krishna consciousness, the day will come. When we look back on, what, on the, what's on the back burner, and we will understand it. Right? Because now you're understanding it with a higher level of consciousness that resonates with the frequency, so to speak, that the Pandavas were also seeing the situation. So that's important. We may not be able to appreciate everything or accept everything, as we evolve in our Krishna consciousness, that day will come. And I hope that Shamanan Prabhu you know, at least gives some sort of context in terms of how we should see it if we cannot really wrap around, wrap our head <clears throat> around certain situations, certain activities. It also highlights and we're going to come even in March Parikshit's life, it will highlight certain ways 
to perceive situations. It will highlight what perspective we need to see the world and situations and events and personalities and people through. Because we have a certain conditioning, so we see things through our conditioning. The Bhagavatam is highlighting how should we see, how should we act. So that is also key that it gives us a, pers a new, pers I wouldn't say new perspective. It gives us the proper perspective to see life, to see events. I, I normally give this situation, which is you know, very interesting in terms of Srila Prabhupada's own life. That Srila Prabhupada, even Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's march, you know, let's just take it, let's go to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta march. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta march was no ordinary person. It's a Paramhamsa, it's a Mahabhagwat, it's a ray of Vishnu. He had all the qualities of a Mahabhagwat from birth. So he's no ordinary person, which means he is Trikal again. He knows past, present, and future. He's leaving this world and he knows what is going to happen to the Godiyama. But he did not intervene. He did not chastise those that were instrumental in destroying the Godiyama. So we should ask ourselves a question, if they know what's going to happen and they have full power and potency to impact what's going to happen and chastise and correct everyone that is there, but they do not interfere with, you could say, destiny or Krishna's will. They accept, okay, this is Krishna's will. I therefore accept. And Krishna will take care of whatever it's going to transpire. Srila Prabhupada's life in, was exactly the same. So many things that happened in Srila Prabhupada's life, where there were uh, you know, those that wanted to take over the movement, they infiltrated you know, the devious types of philosophies, so many things. But Srila Prabhupada's perspective was dependence on Krishna and always you know, seeing how it would be pleasing to Krishna in terms of reciprocation, reciprocating and dealing with situations. So at least it gives us a perspective. So those are a few points that I can share. We're going to be covering the Brahmanas predicts Parikshit's future qualities and we will also be hearing the exalted qualities of March Parikshits. And note, this is even before he is born. 16 to 17, uh, the child will be known as Vishnu Rata and would be a first class devotee. Uh, then 18, the Dishtir inquired about the child's future qualities. And then from 19 to 26, Parikshit's future qualities compared to famous personalities. Text 15. Tam uchur bhamana stushta rajanam prash rayan vitam esya smin prajatanto uru nam uravar shabha the learned brahmanas who are very satisfied with the charities of the king address him as the chief amongst the pools and informed him that his son was certainly in line of the descendants from the Purus. As we go through these verses, we're going to hear how, we're going to hear about the exalted qualities of Parikshit Maj, but also the anxiety of Maj Yudhishthir and his prayers that, I hope this child has these specific traits because right now Yudhishthir Maj is the emperor of the world. And it is the duty of the emperor to make sure that he leaves behind a suitable and qualified heir to continue the rule 
as good, if not better, than himself. So the first principle of a king or desire of the king is that I want a, I want a, a successor. And this successor has to be in line with the descendants of the poorest, the descendants of previous kings. So we see that there's a system, there's a culture, there's a parampara, there's a disciplic succession, even of saintly kings. And these saintly kings that are coming after, one after another, we heard in the last session how um, the parents, Uttara, mother of Maj Parikshit, and Abhimanyu had performed the ceremonies that were appropriate and ideal to raise extraordinary personalities. So this culture was coming, was there in the Kshatriya families so that the souls that were born were ideal, powerful Kshatriyas that could uphold the lineage and the values of the lineage that they're representing. So Maj Parikshit, no doubt, he certainly was in the line of the Purus. So that already tells us that he is coming in line of these great Kshatriyas that implies that he would be himself a great Kshatriya. 16. Devena pratigatena sukle samstam samstam upe you see upe you see upe you see tatavo anugratar tayam vishnu na prava vishnu yatna. The Brahmana said, This spotless sun has been restored by the all powerful and all pervasive. Lord Vishnu, personality of Godhead, in order to oblige you. He was saved when he was doomed to be destroyed by an irresistible supernatural weapon. So Vishnu means one who's all pervasive. Uh, Prabha Vishnu means uh, one who's all powerful and all pervasive. And Maj Parikshit was protected by Prabhu Vishnu, the all-powerful Supreme Personality of Godhead. Why? Here it's described, the Brahmanas are saying, uh, because uh, Krishna, uh, in order to oblige you, in order to uh, please Yudhishthir Maj, in order for Yudhishthir Maj's sake, Krishna protected Maj Parikshit. So that was one reason uh, given here. It's also said that he is Suklas, uh, some stuff. He's spotless. Maj Parikshit was a spotless son. That, in, that also implies uh, an exalted, pure devotee. So, no doubt, a very extraordinary personality. The child Parikshit was saved by the all powerful and all pervasive Vishnu, Lord Krishna, for two reasons. First reason is that a child in the womb of his mother was spotless due to his being a pure devotee of the Lord. The second reason is that a child was the only surviving male descendant of the Purus, the pious forefathers of the virtuous king Yudhishthir. The Lord wants to continue the line of pious kings to rule over the earth as his representatives for the actual progress of a peaceful and prosperous life. After the battlefield of Kurukshetra, even up to the next generation of Generation of March Yudhishthir was enlated, and there were none who could generate another son in the great royal family. March Parikshit, the son of Abhimanyu, was <clears throat> the only surviving heir apparent in the family. and by the irresistible supernatural Brahmastra weapon of Ashwatthama, he was forced to be annihilated. 
but Krishna is described here in as Vishnu, and this is also significant. The Lord, the original personality of Godhead, does not does the work of protection and annihilation in his capacity of Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is a plenary expansion of Lord Krishna. The all pervasive activities of the Lord are executed by him in his Vishnu feature. <clears throat> So two reasons, now we mentioned Krishna is protecting March Parikshit. And uh, here Mahaprabhu is extending in the later part of the purport in terms of uh, Lord Vishnu, uh, who is Krishna's plenary expansion. And we know that Krishna himself as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supreme Enjoyer. And in order to facilitate the creation and different functions and acti activities, the Lord may not directly do that, but the Lord may expand in different forms and features like Vishnu, and through those forms, the Lord may uh, do certain activities. Since they are one and different, they're not different, at the same time they are different, it is Krishna that's doing it, at the same time it's also not Krishna that's doing it. Uh, from different perspective. Child Parikshit is described here as spotlessly white because he is an unalloyed devotee of the Lord. Such unalloyed devotees of the Lord appear on earth just to execute the mission of the Lord. The Lord desires the conditioned souls hovering in the material creation to be reclaimed to go back home, back to God. And thus, he helps them <clears throat> by preparing the transcendental literatures like the Vedas, by sending missionaries of saints and sages, and by deputing his representatives, his representative, the spiritual master. Such transcendental literatures, missionaries, and representatives of the Lord are spotlessly white because the contamination of material qualities cannot even touch them. They are always protected by the Lord when they are threatened with annihilation. Such foolish threats are made by the gross materialists, the Brahmastra, which was thrown by Ashwatthama at the child Parikshit, was certainly supernaturally powerful and nothing of the material world could resist its force of penetration. But the all-powerful Lord who is present everywhere within and without could counteract it by his all-powerful potency just to save a bona fide servant of the Lord and descendant of another devotee. Uh, Yudhishthira was always obliged by the Lord by his causeless mercy. So much Parikshit, child Parikshit uh, was spotless and uh, spotlessly white as it's described. Why? Because he's an unalloyed devotee of the Lord. We find is described that wherever you see Krishna, you will see Srimati Radhavani. Where? In his heart, in his consciousness, in his thoughts. Just as in every being of Srimati Radhavani, Krishna is there. Similarly, in every being of Krishna, Srimati Radhavani is there. And Shrimati Radhavani is uh, the personification, the mother of devotion, personification of devotion, the epitome of pure devotion. And all the devotees of the Lord, uh, they are uh, expansions, pure devotees of the Lord, they are expansions of Shrimati Radhavani's love and devotion to serve Krishna, just like the gopis are expansions of Radhawani to serve Krishna in all different arts and ways. So you also much Parikshit is also uh, a, uh, a part of Shimata Radhawani's potency in terms of an unalloyed devotee to serve Krishna, to serve Krishna's mission. And what is the pure devotee's mission? simply to reclaim the living entities, the conditioned souls, to take them back to the spiritual world. And the Lord uh, will 
according to his sweet will and arrangement, protect, guide, and unfold transcendental literature, missionaries, and the representative of the Lord so that souls can come in contact with them and be taken back to the spiritual world. So much Parikshit, no doubt, child Parikshit, no doubt, was destined to be instrumental in helping souls go back to God. And Ashwatthama releasing the Brahmastra was going to interrupt that, was going to disturb that. And Krishna would not tolerate that and not allow that because that would mean that Ashwatthama would have stopped or interfered with Krishna's plan. Maharaj Parikshit was no doubt instrumental for all of us in terms of having the Bhagavatam spoken. And Krishna had selected Maharaj Parikshit for that. So therefore, Maharaj Parikshit had to stay alive so that the purpose, mission of the Lord could continue. And therefore, the Lord will protect his, de his desire, naturally. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If anybody tries to interfere, uh, Krishna would naturally do whatever is required. We find even Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when the Chankazi tried to interfere with the Sangitan movement, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not say, okay, we'll just accept it. You know, peace, make peace, shanti, shanti, no fighting. No, uh, Lord, Lord Chet Mahaprabhu decided uh, something must be done because if this continues, it would disturb uh, the future of the Sankitan mission. So immediately he summoned all the devotees to come in the evening with torches, torchlight. Millions of devotees came, Katyals, Madanga, at Kirtan and they marched to Chankazi's house. So that's how the Lord uh, protected the Sangitan mission. Right. So one wonderful point in terms of the Lord would and will do whatever is required. Now, if we find that it apparently seems like the Lord did not protect, either the scriptures or the missionaries or the representative of the Lord, the spiritual master. That is our perspective of coding what transpired. Because we know even for example, scripture will not last in the form that we see it eternally in this world. Just like we have you know, a copy of the Bhagavatam in the form of a book. Now that book, because it's made of material elements, it will go through wear and tear. And maybe 100, 200, 300 years, you know, like how we find uh, Indramaj was speaking about, uh, you know, he was holding a copy of Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, written in his own handwriting. And, you know, the paper is very fickle, it's breaking. Because time, with, you know, time obviously destroys, time weathers the paper. So it's not going to be eternally existing. The knowledge is eternally existing, but the form and the format in which it's presented may not. So if we find scriptures being destroyed over time, we should not code it that the Lord is not there and not protecting the scriptures. We see in you know, even, for example, Tukuram. Uh, Tukuram, uh, he was influencing so many uh, souls to uh, become Krishna conscious. In fact, uh, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
on his visits in his visits to South India met Tukaram and Tukaram's surrender to Lord Chaitanya was initiated and encouraged him to continue the Sangitan mission. So uh, the ruler at that time where Tukaram was, he was uh, and, the other, and, the, and the caste Brahmanas, they uh, decided to go against Tukaram and they convinced the ruler to to get to Kuram to throw all his devotional songs in the lake. And to Kuram, you know, accepting that, okay, this is, if this is what the Lord wants, then this is what I should do. And uh, not reluctantly, but being caused by the ruler at that time, he took the scriptures and he dropped it into the lake. Uh, and naturally everyone was, all his devotees were very disturbed. And Tukuram was fasting, praying to the Lord, and eventually the scriptures, uh, the goddess of that lake, uh, brought back the scriptures as uh, dry, perfect, without any destruction. And that's how Tukuram's glories even spread. So the Lord can make arrangements to protect scripture. We find even missionaries, devotees being protected in so many situations. If the Lord desires and uh, has service for them to continue their mission and the service, mm -hmm. then Krishna would protect. Otherwise, Krishna has another plan for them mm -hmm. in uh, their future service. So Krishna would then take them to then next service 17 tasman namna vishnurata iti loke bhavishyati na sandeho mahabhaga mahabhagavato mahan for this reason this child will be well known in the world as one who is protected by the personality of god it o most fortunate one there is no doubt that this child will become a first class devotee and he will be qualified with all good qualities. So the Brahmanas are now making it uh, re emphasizing that yes, much Parikshit would, is called Vishnu Rata because it's protected by the Lord, and no doubt uh, he would be a first class devotee with all exceptional qualities. The Lord gives protection to all living beings because he is their supreme leader. The Vedic hymns confirm that the Lord is the supreme person amongst all personalities. The difference between the two living beings is that one, the personality of God provides for all other living beings and by knowing him, one can achieve eternal peace. Such protection is given by his different potencies to different grades of living beings. But as far as his unalloyed devotees are concerned, he gives protection personally. So two ways Krishna can protect. Krishna can protect through his, his, his energies and Krishna can protect directly. Therefore, Maj Parikshit is protected from the very beginning of his appearance in the womb of his mother. And because he is especially being protected, he's especially given protection by the Lord, the indication must be concluded that a child would be a first grade devotee of the Lord with all good qualities. There are three grades of devotees, namely the Mahabhagavat, Madhyambadikari, and, Kanishta, and the Kanishtadikari. Those who go to the temple of the Lord and offer worship, worshipful respect to the deities without sufficient knowledge in the theological science and therefore without any respect for the devotees of the Lord are called materialistic devotees or Kanishta Adhikari, third grade devotees. Secondly, the devotees who have developed a mentality of genuine service to the Lord and who thus make friendship only with similar devotees, show favor to neophytes and avoid the atheists are called second grade devotees. But those who see everything in the Lord or everything of the Lord and also see in everything an eternal relation with the, of the Lord or the first grade or the first grade devotees of the Lord. Such first grade devotees of the Lord are perfect in all respects. 
a devotee who may be in any of these categories is automatically qualified by all good qualities. And thus a Mahabhagavad devotee like March Pariksit is certainly perfect in all respects. And because March Pariksit took his birth in the family of Mahajudhishthir, he's addressed here in as the Mahabhagavad or the greatest of the fortunates. The family in which a Mahabhagavad takes his birth is fortunate because due to the birth of a first grade devotee of the members of the family, past, present and future, up to 100 generations, becomes liberated, become liberated by the grace of the Lord out of respect for his beloved devotee. Therefore, the highest benefit is done to one's family simply by becoming an unalloyed devotee of the Lord. So very nicely, Prabhupada describing different grades of devotees. And these different grades of devotees naturally develop all good qualities. The soul by nature is and has auspicious qualities. But being conditioned, we acquire qualities which are contrary to our true nature. So as we begin to revive our Krishna consciousness, then those qualities also are revived. It's not about artificially acting according to certain qualities. That's short-lived. But by Krishna consciousness, by proper revival of our Krishna consciousness, then auspicious good qualities, especially the 26 main qualities, are revived, are manifested naturally. Maj Parikshit had those qualities because of being a great pure devotee of the Lord. Then Prabhupada goes on to explain that uh, the highest benefit is done to one's family simply by becoming an unalloyed devotee of the Lord. Very wonderful statement by Prabhupada. We find that it is due to our family members who indirectly or directly have supported us to be where we are, even as devotees in our Krishna consciousness. For example, I would have not met or come in contact with Srila Prabhupada's books and become a devotee if my parents did not bring me up in the place that they brought me up. They fed me, and they took me to school, and they provided my material needs. But because they did that, then that led to me coming in contact with Krishna consciousness. They may not have directly propelled me towards that direction, but no doubt to some degree or other, they were instrumental in me coming in contact with Krishna consciousness. In some cases, it may be that parents are directly involved. They may be neighbors, they may be friends, they may be uh, others who are involved in supporting one so that one can practice spiritual life. And to reciprocate with each one of those souls may be very difficult. It may be even possible to reciprocate now and thank them but what to talk about when they leave? It's even impossible to reciprocate and help them for, uh, for what they've done. But here's one way that one can show one's gratitude and reciprocate for the benefit of those that helped. And how is that? The highest benefit is done to one's family simply by becoming an unalloyed devotee of the Lord. So if we become unalloyed devotees, then 
we are able to benefit all our family members, friends, uh, all those that have interacted with us uh, in a way that is the best way to reciprocate. So this should be also an impetus for us to become pure devotees or unalloyed devotees of the Lord, because that's the best way to help those that have helped us. And if we become pure devotees, no matter where these souls are in the future, what about those that you know, are in the past? All those souls that somehow came in contact with us and have helped us, they all get uh, great benefit. And that great benefit is that by the grace of the Lord, they will become liberated. They will uh, find uh, the path to liberation very, very easily. So this should be the impetus for every one of us to become pure devotees because this will definitely help all our family members, friends, and those that we have come in contact with. 18. Shri Rajo Vacham Apyesha Vams Apyesha Vamsyan Raj Rajar Sin Punya Shlokan Mahatmana Anuvartitas Sweet Yasha Yashasha Sadhu Vade Nasam Satama the good king Yudhishthir inquired, O oh, great souls, will he will he become a saintly as saint as saintly a king, as pious in his very name, and as famous and glorified in his achievements as others who appeared in this great royal family? So now Yudhishthir Maharaj is inquiring from the Brahmanas, and naturally he wants to know about the qualities of uh, this personality that they have already said is going to be protected by the, he was protected and uh, that is going to be a pure devotee of the Lord. The forefathers of King Yudhishthir were gro all great saintly kings, pious and glorified by their great achievements. They were all saint saints on the royal throne and therefore all the members of the state were happy, pious, well-behaved, prosperous and spiritually enlightened. In many of these purports, Prabhupada is going to share and give contrast. A lineage of Rajrishis, saintly kings, which even in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains uh, of Manu, uh, Ishvaku, the sun god, and the dynasty and the lineage that's coming from there, and how saintly kings understood Bhagavad Gita, evam parampara praptam imam rajas soyobidu. These saintly kings understood the Bhagavad Gita coming in the line of the Supreme succession. So they were saintly. And because of that tradition, the, uh, the, 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 the members of the royal assembly of the state they were happy, pious, well-behaved, prosperous, and spiritually enlightened. Under strict guidance of the great souls and spiritual injunctions, such great saintly kings were trained up. And as a result, the kingdom was full of saintly persons and was a happy land of spiritual life. A total contrast to the current situation. Mahajudishir was himself a replica of his ancestors. And he desired that the next king after him become exactly like his great forefathers. He was happy to learn from the Brahm from learned Brahmanas that by astrological calculation, the child would be a first class great devotee of the Lord. And more confidently, he wanted to know whether the child was going to follow the footsteps of his great forefathers. That is the way of the monarchical state. The re reigning king should be pious, chivalrous devotee of the Lord and fear personified for the upstarts. He must also leave and hair apparent equally qualified to rule over the innocent citizens. In the modern startup, modern, in the modern setup of the dem democratic states, the people themselves are fallen to the qualities of the sudras or less, and the government is run 
by their representatives who is ignorant of scriptural modes of administrative education. Thus, the whole atmosphere is surcharged like su with sudra qualities manifested by lust and avarice. Such administrators quarrel every day among themselves. The cabinet of ministers changes often due to party and group selfishness. Everyone wants to exploit the state resources till he dies. No one retires from political life unless forced to do so. How can such low-grade men do good to the people? The result is corruption, intrigue, and hypocrisy. What is the solution? Prabhupada says. They should learn from Srimad Bhagavatam how ideal the administrators must be before they can be given charge of different posts. So it's clear Prabhupada wanted the rulers to study Srimad Bhagavatam. And that is one of the future tasks of the Krishna conscious movement. First, to establish the Brahmanical culture, educate the Brahmanas. And when the Brahmanas are well educated, then systems can be put in place to train and bring up Kshatriyas and teach the Kshatriyas this system that was there. And from there, slowly, this culture of a Krishna conscious rule will predominate and eventually be beneficial to this planet. 19. Brahmana Uchu Partha Prajavita Shakshad Ishvakur Ivamanava Brahmanya Satya Sandas Sandascha Ramo Darshara Dara Tir Dashara Tir Yata the learned Brahmana said, O king, sorry, O son of Prita, this child shall be, shall be exactly like King Ishvaku, the son of Manu, in maintaining all those who are born. And as for following the Brahmanical principles, especially in being true to his promise, he shall be exactly like Ram, the personality of Godhead, the son of Maj Dasha. Dasharat. So now the Brahmanas are going to extol the qualities of March Parikshit. And what's interesting is they're going to compare March Parikshit with other great exalted souls, even uh, to the personality of God himself, like in this case, Lord Ramachandra. So no doubt, March Parikshit was an extraordinary personality. Praja means the living being who has taken his birth in this material world. Okay, so it's not some sectarian term that's only for some group of people. No. Praja means anyone who has taken birth in this material world. Actually, living being has no birth and no death, but because of his separation from the service of the Lord and due to his desire to lord it over material nature, is offered a suitable body to satisfy his material desires. In doing so, one becomes conditioned by the laws of material nature, and the material body is changed in terms of his own work. The living entity does transmigrate from one body to another in 8.4 million species of lives. But due to his being part, part and parcel of the Lord, he not only is maintained with all the necess necessaries of life by the Lord, but also is protected by the Lord and his representatives, the saintly kings. These saintly kings give protection to all the prajas or living beings to live and to fulfill their terms of imprisonment. Maharaj Parikshit was actually an ideal saintly king because while touring his kingdom, he happened to see that a poor cow was about to be killed by the personified Kali, whom he at once took a task as a murderer. This means that even the animals were given protection by the saintly administrators, not from any sentimental point of view, but because those who have taken their birth in the material world have the right to live. All saintly kings, beginning from the king of the sun globe, 
down to the king of the earth are so inclined by the influence of Vedic literatures. The Vedic literatures are taught to the higher planets, are taught in the higher planets also, as there is reference in the Bhagavad Gita 4.1 about the teachings to the sun god, Vivashwan, by the Lord. And such lessons are transferred by disciplic succession as it was done by the sun god to his son Manu and from Manu to Mahaji Shwaku. There are 14 Manus in one day of Brahman. And the Manus refer, referred to year in is the seventh Manu, who is one of the Prajapatis, those who create progeny. And he is the son of the sun god. He is known as Veva, Vevasvata Manu. He had 10 sons and Maj Ishvaku is one of them. Maj Ishvaku also learned Bhakti Yoga as taught in the Bhagavad Gita from his father, Manu, who got it from his father, the sun god. Later on, the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita came down by disciplic succession from Maj Ishvaku, but in the course of time, the chain was broken for unscrupulous persons, and therefore it again had to be taught by Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So all the Vedic literatures are current from the very beginning of creation of the material world, and thus the Vedic literatures are known as Aparu Seya, not made by men. The Vedic knowledge was spoken by the Lord first and first heard by Brahma, the first created living being within the universe. So the King uh, Maj Parikshit will have uh, the qualities uh, like Maj Ishvaku, that means uh, saintly, he would know the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Maj Ishvaku, one of the sons of Vaivasvata Manu, he had 100 sons. He prohibited meat eating. His son Sadada Sashada became the next king after his death. Manu, the Manu mentioned in this verse as the father of Vishvaku is the seventh Manu of the name Vaivashvata Manu, son of sun god. Vivashwan, to whom Lord Krishna instructed the teachings of Bhagavad Gita prior to his teachings them, teaching them to Arjuna. Mankind is the descendant of Manu. Thus, Vivashwata Manu had ten sons named Ishvaku, Nabhaga, Drishta, Saryati, Narishyanta, Nabhaga, Tishta, Karusha, Prishadriya, and Vasuman. The Lord's incarnation, Matsya, the gigantic fish, was invented during the beginning of Vaivavastha Manu's reign. Vaivavastha Vaivavastha Manu's reign. He learned the principles of Bhagavad Gita from his father, Vivashwan, sun god, and he re-instructed the same to his son, Maj Ishvaku. In the beginning of the Tetra Yuga, the sun god instructed devotional service to Manu, and Manu, in his turn, instructed it to Ishvaku for the welfare of the human society. And Prabhupada now talks about Lord Ram, and we'll see for the rest of the, these different verses, Prabhupada does the same thing. Uh, according to the Brahmana's comparison, uh, Prabhupada then takes uh, the opportunity to glorify these different personalities in his purports. Lord Ram, the Supreme Personality of God had incarnated himself as Sri Ram, accepting the sonhood of his pure devotee, Maj Dashrat, the king of Ayodhya. Lord Ram descended along with his plenary portions, and all of them appeared as his younger brothers' brothers. In the month of Chaitra, on the ninth day of the growing moon in Tetra Yuga, the Lord appeared as usual to establish the principles of religion and to annihilate the disturbing elements. When he was just a young boy, he helped the great sage Vishwamitra by killing Subahu and striking Marichi, the she-demon, who was disturbing the sages in the daily discharge of duties. The Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas are meant to cooperate, with, cooperate for the welfare of the mass of people. The Brahmana sages endeavored endeavor to enlighten the people by perfect knowledge and the Kshatriyas are meant for their protection. Lord Ramachandra is the ideal king for maintaining and protecting the highest culture of, human, of humanity known as, uh, the Brahman, known as Brahmanya Dharma. 
The Lord is specifically the protector of the cows and the brahmins. Hence and hence, he enhances the prosperity of the world. He rewarded the administrative demi demigods by effective weapons to conquer the demons through the agency of Vishwamitra. He was present in the bow sacrifice of King Janak and by breaking the invincible bow of Shiva, he married Sita Devi, the daughter of Maj Janak. After his marriage, he accepted exile in the forest for 14 years by the order of his father, Maj Dashrat. To help the administration of the demigods, he killed 14,000 demons. And by the intrigue of the, of the demons, his wife Sita Devi was kidnapped by Ravana. He made friendship with Sugriv, who was helped by the Lord to kill Vali, brother of Sugriv. By the help of Lord Ram, Sugriv became the king of the Vanars, or race of gorillas. The Lord built a floating bridge of stones on the Indian Ocean and reached Lanka, the kingdom of Ravana, who had kidnapped Sita. Later on, Ravana was killed by him, and Ravana's brother Bibishan was installed on the throne of Lanka. Bibishan was one of the brothers of Ravana, a demon, but Lord Ram made him immortal by his blessings. On the expiry of the 14th year, 14 years, after settling the affair of at Lanka, the Lord came back to the back to his kingdom, Ayodhya by flower plain. He instructed his brother Satrugna to attack uh, Lavnasu, who reigned at Mathura, and the demon was killed. He performed 10 Ashwam Ashwamedha sacrifices, and later on, dis he disappeared while taking a bath in the Sarayu River. The great epic Ramayana is the history of Lord Ram's activities in the world, and authoritative Ramayana was written by the great poet Valmiki. Text 20. Esha data sara, Esha data sharan yascha, Yatai yanu shinara shibi, Yasho vi tani, Yasho vi tan yita swanam, Dosya dosh dos yan tir iva yajvanam. This child will be a munificent donor of charity and protector of the surrendered, like the famous King Shibi of the Ushinara country. And he will expand the name and fame of his family, like Bharat, the son of Maj Dushyanta. So now he's compared to Maj Shibi, a king becomes famous by his acts of charity, performing performance of yagya, protection of the surrendered, etc. A Kshatriya king is proud to give protection to the surrendered souls. And this pride is uh, healthy in the sense that uh, they confident, they can give confidence to the praja, to the pop population that they protecting and instill faith that yes, if you have any difficulty, you come to me, I'll give you protection. So this is the pride that they had in terms of protection. They were confident of that or that they could give protection. This attitude of a king is called Ishwarabha or factual power to give protection in a righteous cause. And because they were saintly, they were aligned to Krishna consciousness, representing the Supreme Lord. And therefore they uh, were confident and knew that when they give protection, uh, they're also protected by the Supreme Lord. They're not just whimsically doing things. They are doing things uh, in alignment with Dharma. So that strength was given to them. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord instructs living beings to surrender unto him and he promises all protection. The Lord is all powerful and true to his word. And therefore, he never fails to give protection to his devotees. The king, being the representative of the Lord, must possess this attitude of giving protection to surrendered souls at all risks. So because the king is representing the Supreme Lord and because the Supreme Lord 
uh, will always protect those that surrender to him. That is why also the promise that Lord Ram said and gave anyone who surrenders to me, I will always protect them. So much Parikshit also, anyone who surrendered to him, he gave protection. And we know even Kali took shelter of March Parikshit and March Parikshit had to give shelter. So that's one of the traits of a saintly king that just as the Lord would give protection, saintly king would also give protection. And at, even at the risk of his own life or risk at the resources that he has, the king does not calculate, oh, if I protect him, I will you know, lose this or I'll lose my life. No. If someone needs protection, then the king would go all out to give protection. Maj Shibi, the king of Ushinara, was an intimate friend of Maj Yayati, who was able to reach the heavenly planets along with Maj Shibi. Maj Shibi was aware of the heavenly planets where he was able to be transferred after his death. And the description of this heavenly planet is given in the Mahabharat, Adi Parva 69, 6-9. Sorry, 96, 6-9. Maj Shibi was so charitably disposed that he wanted to give over his acquired position in the heavenly clean kingdom to Yayati, but he did not accept it. Yayati went to, heavenly, to the heavenly planets along with the great Rishi like Ashtaka and others. On inquiring from the Rishi, Yayati gave an account of Shibi's pious acts when all of them were on the path to heaven. He has become a member of the assembly of Yamaraj, who has become his worshipful deity. As confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, the worshipper of the demigod goes to the planets of the demigods, Yanti Deva Varta Devan. So Maj Shibi has become an associate of the great Vaishnav authority Yamaraj on that particular planet. While he was on earth, he became very famous as a protector of surrendered souls and a donor of charity. charities. The king of the heaven once took the shape of a pigeon, hunter bird, eagle, and Agni, the fire god, took the shape of a pigeon. The pigeon, while being chased by the eagle, took shelter on the lap of Maj Shibi and the hunter eagle wanted the pigeon back from the king. The king wanted to give it some other the king wanted to give it some other meat to eat and requested the bird not to be killed, not to be not to kill the pigeon. The hunter bird refused to accept the king's offer, but it was settled later that the eagle would accept flesh from the body of the king of the pigeon's equivalent weight. The king began to cut flesh from his body to weigh in the balance equivalent to the weight of the pigeon. But the mystic pigeon always remained heavier. The king then put himself on the balance to equate with the pigeon and the demigods were pleased with him. The king of the heaven and the fire god disclosed the identity and the king was blessed by them. Devarshi Narad also glorified Maj Shibi for his great achievement, specifically in charity and protection. Maj Shibi sacrificed his own son for the satisfaction of human beings in his kingdom. And thus the child Parikshit was to become a second Shibi in charity and protection. So Shibi's trait or qualities of giving sacrificing even his own life to protect the pigeon. This is the quality of great uh, kings, exalted kings. And March Parikshit uh, would exhibit uh, such exalted qualities of like King Chibi in terms of charity and protection. Then Prabhupada talks about uh, Bharat's uh, different types of personalities who also called Bharat. 
Antosian T. Bharat. Bharata. There are many Bharatas in history, of which Bharata, the Bar of which Bharata, the brother of Lord Ram, the Bharat of the son of King Rishabha, was called Jad Bharat, the Bharat of the son of Maj Dushyanta, are very famous. And all of these Bharatas are historically known to the universe. This earth planet is also is known as Bharata or Bharat Varsh due to the King Bharat, the son of Rishabha. But according to some, this land is known as Bharata due to the reign of the son of Dushyanta. So far as we are convinced, this land's name Bharat Varsh was established from the reign of Bharat, the son of King Rishabha. Before, he, before him, the land was known as uh, Ilavati Varsha. But af just after the coronation of Bharata, the son of Rishabha, this land became famous as Bharat Varsha. But despite all this, Bharata, the son of Maj Dushyanta, was not, less was not less important. He is the son of the famous beauty Shakuntala. Maj Dushyanta fell in love with, Sh with Shakuntala in the forest, and Bharat was conceived. After that, Maj forgot his wife Shakuntala by the curse of Kanvamoni, and the child Bharata was brought up in the forest by his mother. Even in his childhood, he was so powerful that he challenged the lions and elephants in the forest and would fight with them as little children would play with cats and dogs because of the boys becoming so strong. More than the so-called modern Tazan, the rishis in the forest called him Sarvada Sarvadaman, Sarvadaman, or one who is able to control everyone. A full description of Maj Bharat is given in the Mahabharat Adiparva. The, the Pandavas or the Kurus are sometimes addressed as Bharata due to being born in the dynasty of the famous Maj Bharat, the son of King Dushyanta. So King Dushyanta, or the son of King Dushyanta Bharat was very, very powerful. And Maj Parikshit uh, would also take on some of these qualities of being very powerful, able to protect, able to fight, great chivalrous qualities. 21. Danpinam agranir esha tulyar char junayor dwayor hutas hutasa eva durdarsham samudra eva dushtara among great bowmen, this child will be as good as Arjuna. He will be as irresistible as fire and, and, and as unsurpassable as the ocean. The Nari has also been compared to Arjuna in archery, bowmen, fighting. He will be as good as Arjuna. And uh, in terms of the natural elements, uh, irresistible as fire and unsurpassable as the ocean. So two also extraordinary qualities that March Parikshit will have. And as we're going through these qualities of March Parikshit, we can appreciate why his kingdom was so peaceful. Practically, he had subdued Kali for quite a while. Because if somebody has if the citizens have such an exalted, powerful, qualified, pure devotee as a king, we cannot expect anything uh, but peace, prosperity in his kingdom. In history, there are two Arjunas. One is Kartav, Kartaviri Arjuna, the king of Ehaya. And the other is the grandfather, the grandfather of the child. Both the Arjunas are famous for their bowmanship. And the child Parikshit is foretold to be equal to both of them, particularly in fighting. A short description of the Pandava Arjuna is given below. So Prabhupada takes the liberty to spend 
few pages glorifying Arjuna. And we can see, you know, Prabhupada could have said, yes, everybody knows Arjuna. He is Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to him, so everybody knows Arjuna. But no, Prabhupada uh, is taking time to extol the qualities of Arjuna. Why? Because he is dear to Krishna. And if you glorify the pure devotee, you glorify Krishna. You glorify Arjuna, you are pleasing Krishna. If you're pleasing Krishna, you're pleasing Radhavani. And if you're pleasing Radhavani, you're pleasing Krishna. So in this way, Prabhupada is not missing the opportunity to please Radha and Krishna. Pandavarujana, the great hero of the Bhagavad Gita. He is the Kshatriya son of March Pandu. Queen Kunti Devi could call for any one of the demigods and thus she called Indra. And Arjuna was born by him. Arjuna is therefore a plenary part of the heavenly king Indra. He was born in the month of Falguna, February, March, and therefore he is also called Falguni. When he appeared as the son of Kunti, his future, his future greatness was proclaimed by air messages. And all the important personalities from the different parts of the universe, such as the demigods, the Gandharvas, the Adityas, from the sun globe, the Rudras, the Vashus, the Nagas, the different Rishi sages of importance, and the uh, Apsaras, society girls of him, all attended the ceremony. The Apsaras pleased everyone by the heavenly dancing, dances and songs. Vasudev, the father of Krishna, Vasudev, the father of Krishna, and the maternal uncle of Arjuna, sent his priest representative, Kasyapa, to purify Arjuna by all the prescribed samskars and reformatory, reformatory processes. His samskar, of, his samskar of being given a name was performed in the presence of the rishis, the residents of Satshranga, Satashranga. He married four wives, Draupadi, Subhadra, Chitrangada, and Ulupi, from whom he got four sons of the names Shruta Kriti, Shruta Kirti, Abhimanyu, Bharuvana, and Iravan, respectively. During his student life, he was entrusted to study under the great professor Dronacharya, along with other Pandavas and the Kuros. But he excelled everyone by his studious intensity. And Dronacharya was especially attracted by his disciplinary affection. Dronacharya accepted him as a first grade scholar and loved heartily bestow him or bestow him all the blessings of military science. He was so ardent a student that he used to practice bowmanship even at night. And, all, and, and for all these reasons, Professor Dronacharya was determined to make him the topmost bowman of the world. When Dronacharya was teaching Arjuna, naturally giving different tests and uh, also encourage him to shoot a target without seeing. So he would blind, blindfold uh, Arjuna and Arjuna had to shoot the targets that Dronacharya would present. And no doubt it was very difficult for Arjuna. But one night Arjuna was taking rest and he heard somebody in the kitchen and he was surprised, so he immediately got up and went to see who's there in the kitchen. It's so dark, you can't even see anything. And who's in the kitchen? And to his surprise, he saw Bhima, there in the dark, eating. And Arjuna said, what are you doing? Some yeah. having a feast. He said, but you can't even see. He said, no, I can see. And Arjuna was surprised how his brother Bhima uh, could eat in the dark. And he thought, well, if my brother Bhima can eat in the dark, then I can shoot in the dark. He's, he's relishing a feast in the dark. He must have developed the ability to see what he's eating. So I can also then develop the ability to shoot in the dark. 
Uh, so he was inspired by Bhima. And uh, then every night, while others would take rest, Arjuna would uh, be shooting targets in the night and uh, practicing. So this is how he also became expert by practicing uh, expert in archery. He passed very brilliantly the examinations in piercing the target and Dronachara was very pleased. Royal families at Manipur and Tripur, Tripura are descendants of Arjuna's son, Baru Bahana. Arjuna saved Dronacharya from the attack of a crocodile and the Acharya being pleased with his reward, rewarded, pleased with him, rewarded him with a weapon of the name Brahmashira. Maj Drupad was inimical towards Dronacharya and thus when he attacked Acharya, Arjuna got him arrested and brought him before Dronacharya. He besieged a city of the name Abhichatra, belonged to Maj Drupada, and after taking it over, he gave it to Dronacharya. The confidential treatment of the weapons from Brahmashira was explained to Arjuna, and Dronacharya was promised by Arjuna that he would use the weapon if necessary when Dronacharya personally became the enemy of Arjuna. By this, the Acharya forecasted the future battle of the Kurukshetra, in which Dronacharya was on the opposite side. Maj Drupada, although defeated by Arjuna on behalf of his professor Dronacharya, decided to hand over his daughter Draupadi to his young combatant. And he was disappointed when he heard the false news of Arjuna's death in the fire of a Shalak house intrigued by Duryodhan. He therefore arranged for Draupadi's personal selection of a groom who could pierce the eye of a fish hanging on a ceiling. This trick was especially made because only Arjuna could do it, and it was successful in his desire to hand over his equally worthy daughter to Arjuna. Arjuna's brother were at the same time living incognito under the agreement with Duryodhan. And Arjuna and his brothers attended the meeting of Draupadi's selection in the dress of Brahmanas. When all the Kshatriya kings assembled saw that a poor Brahmana had been garlanded by Draupadi for her lord, Shri Krishna disclosed his identity to Balaram. He met Ulupi at Haridwar, Haridwar, and he was attracted by a girl belonging to the Nagaloka. This was Iravan. And sorry, and thus Iravan was born. Similarly, he met Chitra, Chitrangada, the daughter of the king of Manipur, and thus Bad, Baru Vahana was born. Lord Shri Krishna made a plan to help Arjuna to kidnap Subhadra, sister of Shri Krishna, because Baladev was inclined to hand her over to Duryodhan. Yudhishthir also agreed to Shri Krishna, and thus Subhadra was taken by force by Arjuna and then married to him. Subhadra's son is Abhimanyu, the father of Parikshit Maj, and the father of Parikshit Maj, and the posthumous child. Arjuna satisfied the fire god by setting fire to the Kandava, Kandava forest. And thus the fire god gave him one weapon. Indra was angry when the fire was set in the Kandava forest. And thus Indra, assisted by all the demigods, began fighting with Arjuna for his great challenge. They were defeated by Arjuna, and Indra Dev returned to his heavenly kingdom. Arjuna also promised all the protection to one Maya Sura and later presented him one valuable conch shell celebrated as the Devadatta. Similarly, he received many other valuable weapons from Indradev, where he was satisfied to see his chivalry. When Mahajudhishthir was disappoint, disappointed in defeating the king of Magadha, Charasan, it was Arjuna only who gave King Yudhishthir all kinds of assurances. And thus Arjuna, Bhima, and Lord Krishna started from Magadha to kill Charasan. 
when he went out to bring all the kings of the world under his, under the sub, subjection of the Pandavas, as was usual. After, as, as was usual after the coronation of every emperor, he conquered the country named Kelinda and brought in subjugation King Baghdad. Then he traveled through countries like Antargiri, Ulu, Ulukpur, and Modapur and brought under subjugation all the rulers. Sometimes he underwent severe types of penances and later on, he was rewarded by Indradev. Lord Shiva also wanted to try the strength of Arjuna and in the form of an Aborigine, Lord Shiva met him. There was a great fight between the two and at last Lord Shiva was satisfied with him and disclosed his identity. Arjuna prayed to the Lord in all his humbleness and the Lord being pleased with him presented him the Pashupati, Pashupata weapon. He acquired many other important weapons from different demigods. He received Dandastra from Yamaraj, Pashastra from Varuna, the Andar Dharna Astra from Kuvera, the treasure of the heavenly kingdom. Indra wanted him to come to the heavenly kingdom and Indraloka, the Indraloka planet beyond the moon planet. In that planet, he was cordially received by the local residents and he was awarded reception in the heavenly parliament of Indradev. Then he met Indra, Indradev, who not only presented him with his Vajra weapon, but also taught him the military and musical science as used in the heavenly planets. In one sense, Indra is the real father of Arjuna, and therefore indirectly he wanted to entertain Arjuna with the famous society girls of heaven, Urvashi, the celebrated beauty. The society girls of heaven are lust. The society girls of heaven are lusty and Urvasi was very eager to contact Arjuna, the strongest human being. She met him in his room and expressed a desire and Arjuna sustained his unimpeachable character by closing his eyes before Urvasi, addressing her as mother of the Kuru dynasty and placing her in the category of his mother Kunti, Madri and, and Sachi Devi, the wife of Indra Dev. Disappointed, Urvasi cursed Arjuna and left. In the heavenly planets, he also met the great celebrated ascetic Loma Lomasha and prayed to him for protection of Maj Yudhishthir. By closing his eyes before Urvashi addressing, no, I did cover that. When his inimical cousin Duryodhan was under the clutches of the Gandharva, he wanted him, he wanted to save him and requested Gandharva to release Duryodhan. But the Gandharva refused, and thus he fought with them and got Duryodhan released. When all the Pandavas lived incognito, he presented himself in the court of the king of King Virata as an eunuch and was employed as a musical teacher of Uttara, his future daughter-in-law, and was known in the Virat court as Brana as Branala. As Branal, as Branala, he fought on behalf of Uttara, son of King Virata, and thus defeated the Kurus in the fight, in the fight incognito. His secret weapons were safely kept in the custody of a Somi tree, and he ordered Uttara to get back, to get them back. His identity and his brother's identity were later on disclosed to Uttara. Dronacharya was informed of Arjuna's presence in the fight of the Kurus and the Viratas. Later on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Arjuna killed many great generals like Karna and others. After the battle of Kurukshetra, he punished Ashwatthama, who had killed all the five sons of Draupadi. Then all the brothers went to Bhishmadev. It is due to Arjuna only that the great philosophical discourses of Bhagavad Gita were again spoken by the Lord on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. His wonderful ex on the battlefield of Kurukshetra are vividly described in the Mahabharata. Arjuna was defeated, however, by his son, uh, by his son Barut Vahana at Manipur and fell unconscious when Ulupi saved him. After the disappearance of Lord Krishna, the message was brought by Arjuna to Mahajudhishthir. Again, Arjuna visited Dwarka and all the widow wives of Lord Krishna lamented before him. 
He took them all in the presence of Vasudev and pacified all of them. Later on, when Vasudev passed away, he performed his funeral ceremony in the absence of Krishna. While Arjuna was talking, all the wives of Krishna, sorry, taking all the wives of Krishna to Indraprast, he was attacked on the way and he could not protect the ladies in his custody. At last, advised by Vyasadev, all the brothers headed for Mahap Mahaprasthan. On the way, at the request of his brother, he gave up all the important weapons as useless and he dropped them all in the water. And thus ends uh, these few verses glorifying March Prakshit, uh, who uh, was compared to the different personalities. And in terms of Arjuna, uh, Prabhupada gave an extensive description of Arjuna's life. And we can see Arjuna uh, was no doubt uh, glorified by many, many, many uh, great personalities and they reciprocated with Arjuna by giving him uh, so many different weapons. And no doubt Arjuna being a very, very uh, intimate and close friend of Krishna, uh, very dear associate of Krishna, very powerful. The credit of Krishna speaking about Gita also goes to Arjuna and Maj Parikshit was going to be as powerful as Arjuna, expert as Arjuna in terms of bowmanship. So no doubt uh, a very, very glorious and powerful personality that is uh, born in the kingdom of uh, the Pandavas. And next week we'll continue to hear uh, the remaining glorification from verses 22 to 29 on March Parikshit, where the sages con continue to glorify uh, March Parikshit in relation to other great personalities uh, and manifestations of Krishna. Pantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai Shila Prabhupada ki jai March Parikshit ki jai Nithai go pramanamde hari hari. Are there any questions or comments anyone has? Namavati Radhika says, uh, thank you very much. Nice to hear these great personalities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Ma also says, thank you. Yes, one day uh, we, when we perfect our lives, we will be able to meet these personalities face to face. Now we're hearing their exalted qualities. One day we will be able to see them. All right. Chamananda Prabhu says, thank you very much for the wonderful class. We wish the Prabhupada even mentions Tarzan in the purport. Yes. <laughs> Prabhupada must have encountered Tarzan. Robert talks about Charlie Chaplin, dozen different personalities. So yes, he's a dozen is a blessed. He's mentioned in the Bhagavatam. <laughs> Thank you, Mata Chenasidi. All right. So tomorrow is the blessed day, at least in South Africa. In other parts of the world, um, the glorious day of Shimati Radhavan is appearance day. Very, very wonderful day. So we can uh, pray to Shimati Radhavani. Albert um, gave some wonderful classes on Shimati Radhavani. So we can pray to her and 
want to celebrate uh, the wonderful appearance of Srimati Radhavani tomorrow. And we will meet again next week. Thank you. Kvantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai Shri Prabhupada ki jai nitai go prominente. Hari Hari Wall.